Okay, so next we're gonna convert the uh, SP111 clutch pack over to the air operated version. We'll start by removing the grease hose from the sliding sleeve assembly. And then we will remove the upper cotter pins and cotter, cotter keys and cotter pins from the clutch pack. First starting by collapsing them down and taking a small punch and tapping them out. And that's the sliding a sleeve assembly removed from the clutch pack. Next we'll take the, the air cylinder and install it over the clutch pack, putting the cotter pins through the links, through the levers. So the heads of the pins are assembled in a particular manner. So when the clutch pack is spinning in engine rotation, the load is placed against the head of the pin. So as you put them in, you want to make sure you follow that rule. So I start by going around and inserting all three of the pins through the links into the top of the levers. Once all three of them are in, then we can install the new cotter pins, cotter keys, and expand them like so. And now the air bladders attached to the clutch pack. And then the next step will be to install it onto the PTO main shaft. Okay, we've got the clutch pack locked down. We used air to extend out the piston. So the next step is we'll rotate it over, hook onto it with the overhead crane and set it down on top of the clutch shaft. So as we lower the clutch pack down, we'll need to thread the release bearing onto the threads of the bearing retainer and locate the key between the clutch pack and the main shaft. Want to tap the key down just past the threads on the end of the shaft. Okay, we've lowered the clutch pack down onto the main shaft. We put the key in to locate the hub and back plate to the main shaft. Then we tightened our air cylinder until the piston located and torqued up against the snap ring. So now what we need to do is align the air cylinder groove with the stud location to keep the cylinder from rotating. So we'll take a pry bar and just rotate this over to line it up. Now that we've got aligned, we'll take that bolt out and install the stud. We put this bolt in temporarily just to keep our bearing end plate from moving as we we're threading the piston down onto the bearing end plate adjusting nut. We'll apply a small dab of blue Loctite to the threads and thread the stud into place. So we thread the stud down by hand until we're flush with the back of the housing and advance the nut down and lock it into place. That'll keep our bearing adjustment lock tab secured. Okay, for the next step, we'll put the lock washer and nut back on and torque down the clutch pack. The torque is 30 foot-pounds to seat the hub and back plate and then advance it two flats of the nut. So it's seated now. We'll take the marker and mark two flats. So we'll start with this one and we'll take it over to here. Next we'll bend the lock tab up to secure the nut using the chisel to get it started upwards. And a piece of key stock works about the best for bending up against the flat of the nut. So as we completed the installation of the clutch pack on the input shaft, the next step was to install the two air lines, the engage and disengage lines, and tighten them to the cylinders on the side. Then our hoses get routed up to the fittings that come through the inspection plate. So the last step after the hoses have been routed and tightened are to tighten the two fittings on our 90 degree fittings and then secure the cover into place with the two cap screws. This wraps up our conversion of the twin disc SP111 PTO into an RO111 PTO. Uh, it was a quick conversion, went pretty smoothly. 
These are the items that we removed from the SPPTO. If you have any questions, please feel free to dial our 1-800 number and request tech support.